Paul Heyman was the mad scientist behind ECW, the evil genius of SmackDown's golden era, and someone who has evolved and remained a force in wrestling for decades. He's been a manager to many of the greats, as well as the advocate and special counsel to two of the very best. For this video, we want to encapsulate his career and highlight what made Paul Heyman one of wrestling's greatest minds. Let's first look at Heyman's early career, including his original run as a heel manager as Paul E. Dangerously. As a young, pushy photographer, Paul learned from legendary managers like Captain Lou Albano, classy Freddie Blassie and the Grand Wizard. So it's no surprise how well Paulie adapted. Even in his early days, he seemed like a natural. He's gonna rip your stinking head off and spit right down your throat! Right from the start, Heyman was hustling and lying. By blagging his way backstage and sneaking into production meetings, where he learned from legends like Dusty Rhodes. Paulie Dangerously was an arrogant Wall Street yuppie with a brick sized cell phone. I control everything I need to control hey! when my big money people. People call Paulie dangerously. That was not only used for constant business dealings, but also came in handy as a weapon. He was obnoxious, overbearing, and difficult to work with. Basically, his on-screen persona was almost identical to his real-life self, something that remained the same for Heyman's entire career. He was seen by many of his peers as a cockroach of the wrestling business, someone people wanted to dislike, but just had to put up with. But as we'll see, Paul was really a social butterfly with endearing qualities. Heyman was the mastermind behind extreme championship wrestling. He redefined the industry by making a product for the fans. It was some of the most violent, technically proficient, and amazing high-flying action we'd ever seen. All wrapped up into one epic show, which had the most loyal, crazy, and passionate fans that would chant the company's initials in support. Wrestling was stuck in the 1980s, and I thought, it all needs to change. <laughs> Paul accentuated the strengths and hid the weaknesses of what was available to him. This was especially true when it came to his roster. Heyman had an eye for talent where he could spot a superstar before anyone else. Steve Austin was proof of this. Paul requested to work with him in WCW. However, management didn't see what Paul saw. But now in ECW, Heyman was able to give Steve the platform he deserved and could take full advantage of. I've been crapped on for four years. I believe I deserve a break. I didn't get to climb a ladder to the top in WCW like this. Heyman empowered all his wrestlers allowing them to shed their blood, sweat and tears on a literal canvas. Heyman encouraged and motivated the wrestlers to where they'd run through walls for him and the ECW fans, even if he lied and didn't pay everyone on time or at all. Because you have all made it to the dance. Because believe me, this is the dance. And I have never believed in a locker room like I believe in the locker room of ECW. We have the hardest working performers. Oh, come on. Yo, hat. Come on. Yo, hat. Yo, hat. Yo, come on, move that thumb. Yo, hat, come on. Yo, hat, come on. Towards the end of their existence, ECW struggled to balance finances after being screwed over by pay per view providers and TV station TNN. God knows the network has never put out one freaking commercial or one press release to let you know that we're here. We hate this stinking network. Hey, network, I dare you to throw me off the air. ECW came to an end, but the fans and wrestlers never forgot how much it meant to them. I'm not crying. My eyes are red because I was in the back smoking a joint with Van Damme! Yeah! They will always have a special place in their heart for Heyman for making it all possible. Thank you! Thank you! Thank you! Thank you! Thank you! He gave so much. People shit on him. I shit on him. My family lost money. His parents lost money. People who say, oh, he bounced a check on me, he's a scumbag, he's a liar, at times he was. And, and when you say this is a panel of, of a Mount Rushmore, yes. But you know what, if there's one Mount Rushmore, it should be Paul and a bunch of us standing behind him. After EZW closed its doors, Heyman enjoyed a memorable stint on commentary in WWF with Jim Ross. Maybe you could like put your arm around me so people think we're together or something. Are you flirting with me? Yeah. Don't you realize that the mop had more personality than you? That the mop had more charisma than you? That the mop had more chemistry with Perry than you? I mean, can you honestly believe that you ever had a chance against a mop? Get lost! Take a hike! I came to Washington, D.C., and I'm gonna get to see Bush! Austin's gonna get his ass whipped! It's by who? He my Kurt Angle! My Kurt Angle! My Kurt Angle! Get up your Get my ass! I away with it! I got away with it! <laughs> He had a great chemistry with JR and cut some fantastic promos on TV. You drove everybody out of business. 
didn't you, Vince? You ran all the competition into the ground and you stole all their ideas and you made yourself a billionaire out of it. I have been sitting like a damn corporate sellout next to that damn pig! Heyman got the audience to decide him enough to where he could eventually return in a significant heel role down the line. After ECW, Heyman's greatest work as a booker came during his stint as the head writer for SmackDown in 2002 and 2003. This is considered the show's greatest period, as Paul expertly utilized the strong talent he had available to him. The brand split had just occurred, so it was important for SmackDown to stand out and be different from Raw. And given how unique and innovative Heyman's ECW was, there was no better man to lead the blue brand. Yes, things were still overseen by Vince McMahon, man, but Paul had a lot of free reign. While Raw featured numerous long talking segments, Smackdown prided itself on being the wrestling show. Yes, there were still some suspect angles, but these were handled by Vince and Stephanie. Plus much of the show's runtime was taken up by in-ring action. Heyman built his show around a core of wrestlers known as the Smackdown 6. This was a tag team program that allowed six singles wrestlers to feature in main events, producing in-ring clinics on a weekly basis. Mysterio's back out here and he's looking to make a big impact on the top of the cage. The show was constantly better than Raw, which the TV ratings eventually began to reflect, as did the house show and merch numbers when it came to the SmackDown talent. Countless wrestlers benefited greatly from Heyman's creative, including Edge, who Paul saw as SmackDown's version of Sting. Then there was Rey Mysterio, the antithesis of the wrestler WWE usually went for. Left to their own devices, the company would have likely missed the boat with Rey, but Heyman was able to show the higher-ups how amazing Mysterio was. This was aided by how much the commentators put Rey over. This was directly instructed by Paul as after Michael Cole and Taz had called the show live, Heyman would bring them into the studio the next day to redub certain lines. Paul was able to do this because the show was taped, so Heyman could add stuff in during post-production that would have otherwise got flagged by Vince while he was in the announcer's ears during the show. This meant through the announce team, Paul could effectively tell the stories he wanted without others intervening. Cole and Taz's commentary is remembered fondly during this period, and both greatly credit Heyman for making them better announcers. The competition is better on SmackDown. We also got the best the announced team in the business. Unfortunately though, behind the scenes, Paul had to fight a lot of battles. Battles he began to lose more and more. Heyman fought the top brass on everything, which annoyed the likes of Stephanie McMahon a great deal. If you can't trust someone, you can't be in business with them. Paul was ultimately removed from his position and while SmackDown remained a decent show, it never recaptured the magic Heyman had. There's something special about letting the artist be the artist while a brilliant teacher like Paul guides them in the right direction. It's what made ECW special and it's why the fans look back at Heyman's time in charge of SmackDown so fondly. Chris, take another bite, fatso! Paul returned in 2002 as the agent for the company's hottest up-and-coming prospect, Brock Lesnar. Here, Heyman was able to transfer the heat he'd built up during the invasion to his new client, while at the same time acting as the mouthpiece and behind-the-scenes mentor to Lesnar. And ladies and gentlemen, the next big thing is Brock Lesnar! Just like with ECW, for Brock, it was all about showcasing his strengths and hiding his weaknesses. With Paul's help, Lesnar enjoyed one of the greatest rookie years of any wrestler ever. Brock had gotten over strong enough to where he was able to turn babyface and now feud with Heyman's new clients. All this was happening while Paul was also head writer of SmackDown. Paul Heyman! Oh my god! Towards the end of his WWE run, Lesnar realigned with Heyman for a short time. You're the greatest WWE champion of all time! This is your hometown! But the two's most successful run together was still to come. After Brock made his return in 2012, the higher-ups tried to make him cut promos. I'm not the same little naive farm boy. The world got to witness firsthand Brock Lesnar bringing the pain. However, Lesnar simply told him to hire Paul instead. Paul, say something stupid. Heyman returned and every time he spoke, he told us who he is and what his role was. It was a simple but key ingredient of such a great character. It's an introduction for new fans and something regular viewers can repeat. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul Heyman. My name is Paul are you 
that I make fun of you, and then what do you do? You say my name along with me. My name is Paul Heyman. My name is Paul Heyman. My name is Paul Heyman. And I am the advocate for the reigning, defending, undisputed WWE Heavyweight Champion of the World, Brock Lesnar! As the advocate for Brock, Heyman cut the best promos of his career. Lesnar was the prize fighter while Paul acted as the Don King style hype man promoter. He who dies with the most street cred still dies! I got two words for you. Barack Lesnar! However, he spoke with such eloquence and conviction, you almost believe every word he said, which says a lot about how good Heyman was given how much he lied throughout his career. I hope you win! I'm just an advocate! I'm back on the advocate! And, and you told me to say everything! It was all brought to me! I always found it so much easier in life to lie. People accept lies so much easier. I have such an aversion to the truth because the truth is a lot harder pill to swallow. But then again, he lied with so much charisma and persuasion that even if he screwed people over, they still loved him. As much as he lied, he also spoke many home truths and absolutes. No matter what, Heyman never missed on the mic. For the most non-PG ass kicker of the PG era. Well, last night, The Undertaker was a loser. My client, Brock Lesnar, conquered the street! Knock, knock! Who's there? Mike! Mike! Lion Brock Lesnar conquered the Undertaker's undefeated streak at WrestleMania! And I'm the one behind the one in 21 and 1! Eat, sleep, suplex, Repeat. Did Triple H dispute me? No. Cena? Oh, yeah, I know I left out Andre because he's dead, stupid. You don't need to sell your soul to the devil. The devil sold his soul to me a long time ago. You can sell your soul to the devil, but your ass belongs to Barack Lesnar. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the conqueror, my lord. Hey kids, there is no Santa Claus. The Easter Bunny is a fable. That yellow stream running down your leg was not pineapple juice. Paul's second run with Brock can be epitomized with the catchphrase, that's not a prediction, it's a spoiler. Heyman regularly said this in the run-up to Lesnar's matches. It turned out to be more than just an iconic line since the majority of times it was said, Brock in fact came away with the win. Now that's not a prediction, that's a spoiler. Brock Lesnar is going to get rid of Kofi Kingston. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not a prediction, it's a spoiler. And I told you, it wasn't a prediction, it's a spoiler, which means it was the truth. I haven't violated a spoiler since before WrestleMania 30. As the advocate for Lesnar, we got to see Paul interact with a lot of other characters, which made for great TV. But I do have something for Stephanie. You know, I... Hey! Ow! 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 You want to see your husband fight Brock Lesnar? You got it! It's on! You and Brock and SummerSlam! No! Oh, 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 oh. oh. Get out of the way! I'm sorry! I'm sorry! Oh, okay. You need to get out of the way! I told you I was gonna get you! Figure four times! Figure four times! Figure four times! I didn't know it was possible! We're about to be threatened by the Undertaker's baby brother! Pay my client Brock Lesnar's most reasonable fine. One, that your son will call Brock Lesnar 
daddy. You'll never see Brock Lesnar in a title match again. Mark my words, never. RKO on the beast. Oh, oh my God. CM Punk was one of the wrestlers who benefited most from Heyman's guidance. Without having Paul in his corner at OVW, Punk wouldn't have made it to the main shows, never mind the company as a whole. It speaks to how much Heyman thought of Punk, that during the December to Dismember debacle in 2006, Paul put his job on the line to champion what he believed in, which included pushing Punk to have a featured role on the pay-per-view. Paul Heyman saw something in me. That's right, I'm a Paul Heyman guy. Paul Heyman refused to fire CM Punk. So given the connection, it made sense to pair Heyman and Punk together after Paul returned in 2012. Interestingly, Heyman managed Punk and Brock together, but each of their presentations were drastically different. Paul played more of a background role for Punk. However, Heyman's presence was still felt. From his facial expressions, See him, Paul. Yeah, see him, Punk. Every night he goes. And we got the walrus. Paul Heyman out here to keep reminding him of it. Constantly. To the way he held the WWE title. <laughs> I am the best in the world. Paul remained the absolute pro we knew him to be. While with Punk, we also got to see Heyman interfere in matches and get physical. Officials are still down. Punk, yes, dude, Heyman. Oh, Heyman. <laughs> Heyman ran in a match and see him. Paul ended up turning on Punk in a feud that started off very well. Overall, it will be remembered for how entertaining Heyman was throughout it all. Even when things took a turn creatively, Paul remained the highlight. No! Mr. Heyman, please. Stay out of my personal life! CM Punk, I still love you. And for the first time in your life, Paul Heyman, you tell the truth. Show me a hero and I'll show you a coward that ran out of options. And now you're gonna feel my wrath! Do you understand me? Do you? I fathered you! I cared about you! We're in the hand let go! The punk's hanging on! Let go! The walrus is blubbering! Let go! He's joking! John did that! Because I am the voice of the voice of the voiceless. This is my pipe bomb about CM Punk. In 2005, WWE had no vision for you. And what did I do? I martyred my entire career for you. By 2020, Heyman had built himself a first ballot Hall of Fame career, but little did we know he was about to embark on one of his greatest runs to date. As a special counsel to Roman Reigns, Heyman played the loyal wise man. He played a key role in getting the previously polarizing Reigns over as a tribal heel. It's not just a prediction, that's a spoiler. This, this, this alliance with Reigns and Heyman. Just swing. You thought I was out. He pulled me back in. Pointing your accusatory fingers at me for corrupting him. It's him corrupting me. Paul was also a pivotal piece in crafting the critically acclaimed Bloodline story. Heyman and the group sought to put together a body of work that would be compared to The Sopranos, Breaking Bad, and The Wire. A compelling, thrilling drama with cinematic storytelling and riveting villains. Roman Reigns! Roman Reigns! And with Heyman at the helm, there was no better man to act as the group's slimy businessman on screen. Ding! Plus he had history with the Anawais and was a respected real life friend of the family. Paul Heyman. And you go way back with my family. That's why I got love for you. Oops. Paul's story arc was enhanced greatly during this period from washing his hands of Brock. Whoa! Wide television every Friday night. If Brock 
Lesnar fears you, I, I'm under the impression he wouldn't dare show up at Extreme Rules. No, not that Brock Lesnar is Roman Reigns. I mean, you beat Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. This is when Brock Lesnar usually takes six to nine months off and leaves everybody else hanging, which is a life that you rescued me from, my tribal chief, which is why I love you, my tribal chief. Are you, right? Are you kidding me? And Roman Reigns with a Superman punch. It was all Roman's idea to begin with. It was never my idea, but I love you. Oh my God. To the unquestioned loyalty he showed towards Roman. My tribal chief. I am the wise man. Who's the main event around here? Roman Reigns. Wise man. Is my tribal chief? Who is the tribal chief? You are my tribal chief. Do I gotta open my own doors now? No, 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 my, uh, my, my apologies, my tribal chief. Wise man. Yes, my tribal chief. Is it not WrestleMania season? It is WrestleMania season, my tribal chief. When it comes to Sami Zayn, it's better to have him in the castle pissing out than out of the castle pissing in. Heyman worshipped the tribal chief and treated him as a godlike figure. I acknowledge you, my tribal chief! We all acknowledge you, my tribal chief! The head of the table, the tribal chief, in God mode himself! It's a family celebration. Wise man, you are family. I love you. I love you, wise man. I love you too, my tribal chief. And I thank you for your honesty. Let's be honest, the way you look at Roman Reigns, a little weird. Paul demonstrated his loyalty in many ways, not just from the way he spoke and offered wisdom to Reigns, but through the little things Heyman did, from the way he held the title, to his expert pass of the microphone. The energy is palpable. Oh, what a pass! Or when he called Roman on the phone. <coughs> Call Roman Reigns. To his brilliant facial expressions in the background of promos or during matches. I am gonna be the one to take him down! A remorseless Roman Reigns. Tell Charlie to fire up. Oh! Wait just a minute! Not so fast! Despite not being the main focus of the scene, Heyman was always reacting. Edge there! Spare! Cover it! Cover the match! Do an edge! Miracles! Haruba can hit it! Sammy's gonna do it! It was this level of acting that helped make the Bloodline story so iconic, which further cemented Heyman as one of the industry's greatest characters. How'd WrestleMania do without Roman Reigns last year? To, 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 to my knowledge, it was the lowest attended WrestleMania of all time. ECW is dead, and I wish the same for Sami Zayn. In my last conversation with your dad, he told me you were his favorite son. But Roman Reigns was the son he always wanted. My tribal chief, do you want your sons sitting at his table? No one has ever beaten this Roman Reigns. It's so good! Acknowledge him. He's been called a liar, a hustler, a genius, and a wise man. Paul Heyman is and has been all those things. It's what makes his story so special. He excelled wearing plenty of different hats across his time in the business, and his success allowed him to reach the top of the industry. When it's all said and done, Paul Heyman will be remembered as one of wrestling's most important figures. Now, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out our similar video where we discuss what made Roman Reigns the biggest star in wrestling. Hope you have a great day, and I'll see you next time.